Our next guest uh, had a fantastic first season of AFL football playing for Carlton. Lockie O'Brien played 18 games in his first season, which is just absolutely That's fantastic. After good being effort. taken as pick 10 by the famous Carlton Football Club, and he's been good enough to join us. G'day, Lockie. G'day, KB. How are you going? How's well going, done, uh, young fella, playing 18 games in your first season. How would you see the year out? Um, yeah, obviously it wasn't, probably wasn't the year that uh, we were hoping as a group, um, but individually uh, to get 18 games in my first season and uh, I suppose grow as a player and uh, get a lot more confidence, um, I'm sure it'll hold me in good stead for next Was year. Was it 18 straight or did you uh, skip a game? Uh, obviously we have the bye um, yep. and then yeah, I missed one game due to management. Management, Kevin. I don't like the word uh, management. Did, well, you, you, did you want to be managed at that stage? Uh, I suppose uh, it's a very long season and uh, a lot longer than school seasons uh, from where I was at boarding school. So did need a little bit of a spell. But, um, yeah, obviously they have a plan in place to make sure the bodies get through and uh, that's what happened for me. First game? Tell us about the first game. Uh, yeah, it's down in uh, Bolts' homeland in Tasmania. Um, rain coming in sideways, a bit of hail every now and then. And, Enjoy uh, that. <laughs> definitely wasn't too much sunshine, that's for sure. So um, it's obviously a great experience to play my first AFL game and got the family down from uh, Mildura and things like that. But well, Mildura, they would have loved the weather. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's for sure. So it um, wasn't a great day going down, but I think it was 80-something points in the end. But, um, yeah, great experience. Uh, what just... about uh, playing uh, against uh, the side that... You supported uh, as a yet kid. I mean, you're only a young kid now, but uh, you bagged for Collingwood uh, b- before you got drafted by the Mighty Blues. Yeah, Collingwood supporter. So um, obviously the big rivalry there. Didn't uh, didn't have much of a taste for Carlton before uh, they <laughs> they said my name. Uh, but did you, did you hate Carlton as a kid? Oh, uh, I wasn't one of those supporters that was really passionate. You probably um, weren't old enough to realise yeah. the... No, uh, look, he didn't hate Carlton. Look, he respected Carlton. Don't, don't, don't. He, he, he's got great respect Can for I Carlton. Just, yeah, great a, respect. Here's a heads up, Lockie. He bags, this bloke here, bags Carlton on a weekly basis. No, I've got great respect yeah, for Carlton. Yeah, They're exactly. great traditional rivals of, of the Tigers. Anyway, back to... Uh, you, so you bagged for the Pies as a kid, so then you um, got to play against them. What was that like? Yeah, um, obviously it's a bit different... Um, when I was growing up, my favourite player um, was pretty traditional in Scott Pendlebury and things like that. But uh, ever since he came across, I loved Mason Cox as well. So seeing him out on the ground was uh, a little bit of a, I suppose, eye-opener. He's a very big man. Um, Were you all struck, though, you know, with out there on the field with Pendles and others? Yeah, uh, there was just one stage in the game. Um, Pendles just showed a little bit of class on me and uh, gave away a free kick, and he kicked a... Pretty good goal, that's for sure. So uh, I think at that stage, I just thought, like, wow, like that's the level you really want to get to. Did you? No. I mean, how did you feel when he kicked the goal? I mean, <laughs> oh, I was flat. Yeah, because <laughs> um, it was a bad free, was it? Or did he milk it? What What happened? Oh, it was, yeah, he just got to the bowl first, and um, let's just say he got a little bit lower than me, and yeah, got him a good one to the jaw at the same time. So a free kick for around the neck. Yep, and he slotted it, did he? Yeah. And did he say anything to you? No, he didn't. He just trotted off. Yeah, <laughs> class. Pretty exciting Class. time. <laughs> you can stop admiring him now. <laughs> He's an opponent now. <laughs> it's a pretty exciting time uh, to be at Carlton at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of really terrific young players at uh, at Carlton at the moment. You've got Charlie Kuno's there and Harry McKay's there and you, yourself and uh, Paddy Dow. I mean, the, the future there, even though you only won the two games for the year, but it seemed to me, just reading about Carlton and watching Carlton, that the younger players didn't lose any great confidence during the course of the season. Yeah, a lot of people obviously ask, like, how is the team morale and things like that um, after going through a season like that? And uh, I always say that because we're so young and I suppose haven't had, like, the Simo experience 16 years and, uh, like, the football, um, he's probably just used to playing AFL. Um, all, AFL's still fresh to all of us, so just to get the opportunity every week to put on that jumper and uh, go out there and play in front of fans is, uh, we love it. So um, I suppose that's really something that can continue to drive us and... Yeah. Despite the fact uh, this week it was first and first to fourth year players back at the club, uh, he was back, wasn't he, Simpson? Yeah, Simo's been um, been to all the main sessions this week. Um, Andrew Phillips also made a return, and um, we have Sam down there as well, so it's been great. And of course, Sam Doherty, after missing a year with an ACL, is running your co-captains. Um, what was he like around the club last year? Having he would have been shattered, obviously missing it. He was, was a coach, an assistant coach, wasn't he? Yeah, he's uh, on the coaching panel. Um, Pro, pro, uh, pro, most lo- most on the uh, the bench and on ground, um, and he was just someone that obviously because he reads the game so well and has great leadership um, qualities, 
he helped us, I suppose, when we came off just to give a, that player view as well as the coach's view. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit mixed up when a coach gives direct player uh, feedback to a player, whereas when it's coming from a player, they understand they're out, they've been out there before. It's really good feedback. Have you caught up with uh, any of the new recruits yet? Uh, McGovern, of course, and Fasolo and uh, Will Setterfield? Yeah, so all those boys um, came back at the start with us um, and they've started to yeah, really gel into the group and things like that. Um, really great fellas and uh, yeah, Will obviously has a fair few mates from GW West at the club so he's fitting in really well. Who did you work with at the club when you went there? Not as a coach but uh, as a teammate. Who sort of took you under, your, under their wing? Uh, Ed Kerno did, yeah. yeah. He's uh, been a really good role model for me. Um, I base my, my game a lot off uh, my running ability and things like that and uh, he being the strongest at our club and one of the strongest definitely in the AFL um, we have a really good rivalry when it comes to all that type of stuff and um, just the way that he really cares not just about on the field football stuff just off the field as well he's called me pretty much once a week even while he's in Europe on holidays he's yeah, been amazing support What do you like doing off the footy field? Uh, you spend your spare time keeping away from social media we all hope <laughs> Yeah, not, not uh, right into the social media aspect but um, no, don't. In, the, in the off season it's great to get home um, love getting back to Mordura and Spend a fair bit of time by the river and uh, out skiing and things like that. So that's um, really good for me. They don't, um, mind, they don't mind your water skiing? Oh, I take it pretty easy. Um, <laughs> n- n- none of the slalom stuff, just get behind on the tube and all that type of stuff. <laughs> there's there's a list of things they don't like you, you to do, isn't there? Like? Yeah, there's actually there's a fair few things that uh, if you, I suppose, hurt yourself doing, you're going to in trouble. <laughs> So, Do you ride bikes or anything? I mean, I'm talking about motorbikes or anything because they're nah. pretty dirty on that, aren't they? No, nah, I'm not into the motorbike riding. So what are you not allowed to do, actually? What were your instructions for the holidays? Um, oh, for me, I was a little bit different. Um, thing, I, was, I was in a moon boot at the end of the year um, with, my, with my foot. So Was that a stress fracture? Yeah, it was. Um, so just a healing stress fracture. So um, all cleared up now, but... For me, it was primarily just making sure that I was um, getting the body right and things like that. So um, I was looking after my body. And then once I was out in the boot halfway through, went to Bali and things like that to get away with some friends and, uh, yeah, really enjoyed myself. What about Brendan Bolton? Uh, when he first came on the scene uh, and he took over the coach of, uh, of Hawthorne, he was laughing and joking and smiling and, and, uh, and thanking all the, the media for coming along to the press conferences. Uh, but I, I've seen him a few times on game day. He can get a bit aggro, get a bit agitated. <laughs> Yeah, they are. Uh, be the, angry. The video of uh, Bolts at that uh, press conference when he was at Hawthorne comes up a fair bit in team <laughs> meetings. <it? laughs> yeah, um, but now all in good fun. But yeah, Bolts. Um, yeah, he does know how to give a good spray. But I think um, when he does give it, it's really measured. Um, obviously, a few times this year we have deserved a bit of a kick in, and um, it's a good way to obviously get the players going and things like that. And you know that it's not a demoralising thing. It's just a thing out of respect, and uh, he always wants the best for us. Just a quick. A cricket update. Glenn Maxwell went out. Uh, <clears throat> not a very good shot. Uh, about five minutes ago, Staunis has been in for five minutes, and he's just been caught in mid wicket by an absolute cracker. And so we're struggling now, Doc. We are now six for one seventy, and uh, in all sorts of trouble, I guess. Now we'll take a quick break. Uh, we're coming back. Lockie O'Brien, uh, Carlton Young Gun, is our very, very special guest. Lockie O'Brien has joined us. Young Carlton Gun has joined us. Lockie, uh, what about kicking your first goal? Yeah, it was uh, a little bit later on in the season. Um, yeah, it was against Brisbane Lions, 45 metres out. Yep, <laughs> Straight so, through uh, the middle? Yeah, straight through the middle. So um, On the run? On the run, yeah. It was a snap. So it's something that obviously you look back on and uh, really cherish. Was but that, uh, your first shot on goal, uh, Lockie? Uh, no, it was not. I um, had, a, had a bit of strife in front of goals uh, earlier on in the year. So, um, yeah, we'll keep it at that. <laughs> Uh, had a few, okay. Had a few misses, a couple of out of bounds on the full. Uh, I think I think I was uh, three points and a few out in the bounds on the full before my first goal. So, see so you having an issue with set shots? Seriously? Oh, um, probably just a little bit nervous at the start. Mm. Um, next goal came the next game, so uh, that was a set shot. But you do you do get a bit hesitant in front of goal um, before you kick your first one. That's for sure. So a little bit of hair ruffling when you kicked it. Eventually, the whole team come in. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a great feeling. Yeah. <laughs> All have the boys been... giving you a few whacks on the head, yeah, actually hurts more than what it, th- yeah, anything else. Well, if you ask Kevin, not only will he tell you about his first goal, but he'll give you a signed <laughs> photograph of his first goal. He carries them around with him. No, but it's a, it's a great moment, uh, you know, particularly if you're in a position to kick a goal, if you're a midfielder or a forward, and it's like sort of welcome to the big stage, you know, if you can kick that first goal, it's a, it's a bit of a monkey off your back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Robert Walls, a uh, great friend of ours here, and of course, uh, Carlton Premiership. 
uh, star and uh, and premiership coach as well. Uh, he's joined. He's gone back to Carlton as a as a, a mentor, I think, to uh, to a number of people at Carlton. Have you met him yet? Yeah. So uh, Robert uh, got introduced to the players on Wednesday um, as a coaching coach's mentor and things like that. So obviously he'll uh, pay close attention to the playing group as well. But um, yeah, um, they've got him on to help out the coaching staff as well. Don't get on the wrong side of uh, Robert. <laughs> he's, he's very tough. Yeah. He can be very blunt <laughs> and straight to the point. So when you go to a club, uh, when you went there uh, at the end of 2017, um, what sort of history lesson do you get given? I mean, to learn about the uh, the stars of the club and the, uh, the legends there. Yeah, so um, obviously... The, one of the first people you meet is Stephen Silvani, um, one of the most important people of the club's history. But um, I think uh, when it comes to um, AFL and uh, the history, um, you know the club's history, obviously the premierships, um, the last one being in 95 and it starting in uh, 154 years ago. But um, the biggest thing is uh, probably the player's number um, and the, the names on your locker when you walk into the club and... People put uh, special emphasis on that and usually when you play your first game you get presented your jumper by a player that has worn the number as well. So um, for me, I obviously came in um, and took on Gibber's number and Gibber's been really uh, good to me in this year. Actually, I've seen him a few times um, out in the field and at a Doc's engagement party with uh, his fiance. So He's always uh, really good and has a chat with me and things like that. And uh, I suppose that just comes from, yeah, both of us wearing the same number. Well, it's a famous number, number four, of course, uh, Stephen Kernham, one of the greats. Uh, Lockie, we hope that you're going to be one of the greats of the Carlton Football Club. I've seen you play many games during the course of the year and you're a fine young player, so we wish you well in 2019. Thanks for joining us today. Good on you. Best of luck. Appreciate it. Cheers.